So here we have a quick quiz, if you will, covering content from sections 4.1 and 4.2. The intent of this quiz was just to give you an idea of kind of what your um, understanding was of some of the problems within these two sections. So if you wanted to, you know, try these problems on your own, do as many as you can, and then um, when you get to a point where you're finished and you want to check or you need some uh, further instruction, then you can come back to the video. Problems one and two have us uh, graphing a parent function and then using transformations to graph the given function. So in problem one, we're given the parent function of the exponential two to the x, and then we're asked to graph g of x, which is a shift left one and then down one. For something like this, you'd be provided a grid to work off of, but let's go ahead and draw that coordinate plane. Graphing y equals two to the x, you might remember that um, when x is zero, the output is one. It'd be good to go ahead and le at least label one point on both the x and y axis so I can kind of understand the scaling. When x is one, the output is two. So if that's one, I'm up here at two. And when x is two, then the output is four. You can create a t-chart, but you don't have to. If you remember how to find these values without a t-chart, that's fine. And remembering that the exponential functions have that horizontal asymptote, and the graph goes off the screen like that. So this is our parent function f of x. Then we want to take some key points on this function and move them left one and down one. I might want to start with, since I'm moving down one, I might want to start with, go ahead and, and uh, putting in a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one. Since the parent function's horizontal asymptote is, is at y equals zero, we have to shift that horizontal asymptote down as well. So we're down here at negative one. All right, returning to moving the points left one and down one, I might take this point, it's a pretty important point, move it left one and then down one. So that point correspond, corresponds to this new point on the negative x-axis. So off of this point, I'm gonna draw this part of the original graph. And then this point, left one, down one. And this point, left one, down one. So now we have enough points to go ahead and finish graphing g of x. Okay, and I might wanna label that as well, that's g of x. You might be asked a series of questions like, what's the domain range um, and any asymptotes with the new graph here? All right, number two, let's begin by graphing the parent function e to the x, the natural exponential function. Looks very similar over here um, to this parent function. So we know when x is zero, the output is one. When x is one, the output is e, that value we've come to know as um, being almost three, 2.72. Might just label that three. It gives us an idea of what your scaling is. When uh, x is two, I think if I remember, the output was a little more than seven. So that's actually gonna be way up here. Might wanna move it over a little bit. My scaling's off a little bit since I don't have a coordinate plane to kind of work off of a grid. Something like that, we'll label this f of x. All right, coming back up here to g of x, I see the transformations are left one and also a reflection across the x-axis. I try and do the reflections first and then the translations last. So I might take a couple of steps in graphing this. I'm, because there's a couple of steps here and one of them is a reflection, a little bit different than over here where you're just moving points left, right, up, or down. Let me reflect across the x-axis first. This point comes down here. This point would come down here. And this point up here would come way down here. So 
not perfect, but it is a sketch. Like I said, you'll have a grid to work off of. All right, so I kept that in pencil since it's just a reflection. It's not my final graph. It's a reflection across the x-axis. Now I'm going to take this reflected graph and move every point left one. Well, when you move left or right on an exponential or, and not up or down, you're not moving that horizontal asymptote. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this point left one. So I'll put a tick mark here. That's negative one. So this point translates to here. This point will translate to here. And whatever point I'm using down here would translate to here. Not the best, but like I said, you'll be given a grid to kind of work off of. And then the graph just kind of turns back in this way. And we'd label that g of x. And you might be asked things like, what's the domain of this function? What's the range of this function? And what's the equation of any asymptote that this graph might have? All right, looking at objective, uh, the next objective for problems three and four, we're supposed to write each equation. Yes, these are both equations because I see an equal sign in its equivalent exponential form. So these are currently log equations because we see the presence of the log, but we want to um, remove the logs and change these to the equivalent exponential forms. Much like one half is the fraction, but 0.5 is the decimal. Those are two different forms, but they name the same value. You might remember this is around the world. So start with the base on the log. This becomes your exponent. And this is your arc, um, this is your value. So b cubed equals 27. So both our answers are exponential in form. They don't have logs in them. Five and six. We're gonna go just the opposite way. Write the equivalent log form. Both of these are exponential equations and we wanna write an equivalent form of these with the log presence. So I started with the exponent and I just went two equals log. The base I need is the base on the exponential, which is 13. And this value over here, whatever it is, x becomes the argument. And just make sure that that looks like a base, a subscript, that it's not on the same line as all of this other uh, information. Okay, the last 14 were asked to evaluate or simplify without using a calculator. Now, in a coming up video, um, I will be showing you how to use the scientific calculator on um, any quizzes or assessments. So, I mean, I won't know if you're using a scientific calculator for these problems. So, it, you know, unless I... I say to you, show work or something like that. Um, otherwise, um, once we learn how to use the calculator for these, we can we can go ahead and proceed with that. All right, so evaluate, evaluate means to get an answer. All right, so for these, you might remember that we said, okay, this is equal to something. What is it equal to? Well, I don't know what it's equal to, but let me go ahead and make it an equation. Once made into an equation, you can change its form to exponential. So 5 raised to what power is going to give us 125? 125 is bigger than 5, so we started there, and we saw if we could rewrite this value as a power of the other number. And 125 is 5 cubed. And here's where we removed the bases, and we equated the exponent, and the answer was x equals 3. So for any of these that you know the answers for immediately, just by inspection, just go ahead and write the answer down. You don't need to show the work. For example, number nine, this says five raised to what power is one? Well, the only exponent you can raise five to to get one is zero. So if you wanna just go right to zero as the answer, equals zero, fine. Otherwise, you can go 5 to x equals one, and from here, I can't rewrite five as a power of one. So I just have to know that, oh, this must be something I need to know. So that exponent is gonna be zero. Same thing with 10, we can do that by inspection. This is saying nine raised to what power is nine? The only thing I can raise nine to uh, as a power is one to get that answer of nine right there. So when these values are the same, right here we know the answer is one. The work that supports that is this exponential, nine to the x equals nine 
and I can see that that understood exponent's one. We can remove, remove the basis, so the answer is x equals one. Going back to number eight, that's not as obvious as these two or even this one right here. Okay, two issues. We need to get three out from underneath the square root, and then we also need to rewrite this without it being in fraction form. So our attention is going to turn right here to do a rewrite to get the same base of three that's over here. So let's just bring down three to the x equals square root is the same thing as the fractional exponent one half. Let's get three out of the denominator by bringing it to the numerator, adjusting the exponent to negative. We have same basis, so we have our answer. Okay, looking at this last row of problems right here, uh, we can see that log base 10 of 10, the exponential raised to the negative four is equal to x. You might remember if you have a log with a base 10 that has the same base as the exponential that these two are inverses, they undo each other. So your answer is gonna be negative four. So if you remember that, that's great. Otherwise, you can do the same procedure, same set of steps, 10 to the x is equal to 10 to the negative four. But the visual here is we have the same basis, so x is negative four. You don't have to do this if you know that the answer is negative four. All right, for number 12, I see again the argument is one, just like the argument up here is one. This was a base five, this is a base e. It doesn't matter what base you have, if you want an answer of one and you've got to find the exponent on this base of E that gives you one, the answer is going to be zero. I'd like to rewrite ln as log base E. You don't have to. So if I did, ln converts to log base E. I have the one here, the one comes down, and I want to find this answer. Changing to exponential form, E to the X equals one. And I should see from here, the only way to get one is if X is zero. If you see it back up here, go right to the answer, x equals zero. You don't have to write all this down. All right, in 13, you, I hope you can suspect that the answer, predict that the answer is gonna be five. This is an exponential, natural exponential with a natural log base. These are inverses, so this answer is five. Without x equals, that's fine. I know most of these I had x equals, it doesn't matter. Okay, 14, we don't want to say the answer is eight. The answer is not eight. E is in the denominator of a fraction, so I need to rewrite that okay, um, as natural log uh, e to the negative eight. So I brought e to the eight up to the numerator, adjusted the exponent. So if you see that the natural log and the natural exponential undo each other, they're inverses and the answer is negative eight, that's fine. Otherwise, sometimes I like to write ln as log base e, but I still have e to the negative 8. I still have the equals x, and I can see as a visual that the log with base e with the exponential with base e undo each other, so my answer is x equals negative 8. And I could have done the same thing back over here on number 13. I could have taken e, but instead of ln as an exponent, I could have written it as log base e, and then I had the 5. If I want to say, what is that equal to? Perhaps it might be a better visual that you can see E and log base E, and they cancel, so X equals five is the answer. It's okay if you don't write X equals, that's fine. If you know what the answer is, just record it. And that's it.